what's going on everybody it's Rural Wide. you're coming at you with a brand new video and it is a great time to play Yu-Gi-Oh right now with so many different decks currently competitively viable on top of four brand new decks coming into the format between the new deck build pack valiant smashers and the fire king structure deck R, there's basically an option for any player to pick up a deck and see some form of success with it right now i work together with my twitter followers this time which if you haven't followed me on twitter you should totally do so for news channel updates shit posts and more in order to put together a more accurate tier list than my last couple, either adding some decks that deserve a bit more representation or removing some decks that haven't really seen much top cut success in a little while, and I've tried to culminate the best kind of tier list that I could. But with that in mind, that doesn't mean if you don't see a deck that you like on this tier list that it isn't currently viable. Like I said, there are so, so many different decks that you can play right now, and I can only just fit so many without making the video like five hours long. Like for example, I think Bird Up is actually still a pretty strong deck, even without some Morgue right now, and I have seen a lot of success with it, but it's not a deck that's like super high represented and definitely hasn't seen any top cut rep at like regionals and stuff. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into my competitive Yu-Gi-Oh tier list for the December 2023 format, post Valiant Smashers and Fire King Structure. Starting us off, we have of course the most high and probably the only actually currently playable archetype coming out of Valiant Smashers, being a Centurion, Center Ion, whatever you want to call it, it's Centurion. Uh, so I've seen a lot of people, especially a lot of other Yugi tubers, severely hyping this deck up, and I get a lot of it's just to like get some views, get some free engagement, but this deck's kind of mediocre in my opinion. Like the deck is basically a one trick pony that loses very, very hard to hand traps. And yeah, the continuous trap gimmick is really cool, but like, you know what isn't cool? Going into King Calamity every game and crumbling when you can't. So while yes, it is technically the best out of the archetypes out of this set, it's a pretty low bar to actually set. On that regard, next up is Valmonica. And as someone that's had the pleasure of testing Valmonica myself, it doesn't do anything and it, it's actually even more so that less that it doesn't do anything and more that it, it just can't like the archetype has two monsters both of which you want to keep in your pendulum scales the entire time meaning that you have to supplement it with engines that kind of work with the archetype to actually do anything and the only engine that actually helps you turn one is the performage engine which has been outdated for the last like seven years now eight years like the actual best end board i've ever made with this deck after committing my entire hand and it had to be a perfect hand was like one of the traps in grave the link monster to copy it one of the traps on field both scales live and like an sp which isn't very much it's like a bounce a spell and trap pop a monster negate target protection and then sp like, that's really what it is. And it sounds like a lot, but it's mostly just because the trap cards have two effects if you control the Link Monster. So if the Link Monster gets hit with something, it's like, lights out. And that's even if you can make the Link Monster, because you have to have three uh, burns uh, separately on you when you have the Fiend one live in your Pendulum Zone. And by the Fiend one live, I mean both of them live, because they can't just let you get the counters on there while they're in the scale individually. That would just be too easy, wouldn't it? I think Valmonica easily has some pretty good potential. They have the groundwork there, but they're gonna need probably the most love out of any of the archetypes in the set to actually get going somewhere. Finally, it's a very similar case for Mem Mementolian, whatever it is. I don't know, I'm just gonna call it Memento because that's what it was when it was originally revealed memento is actually decent like it, it has a game plan the main issue is that its game plan isn't that amazing i mean you're ending on like this really big towers and you probably want to blind second with this deck i just remember a lot of like destruction and graveyard shenanigans it just felt like a zombie deck that wasn't as great at being a zombie deck as other zombie decks i think the theming is really cool and i think that if they get a separate win condition that actually does something more than being a big unga boonga they can definitely have some potential but for now it's just going to go in the rogue category like this entire set was kind of mid something that isn't just completely mid though is fire king fire king is getting the structure deck out in a few days after this video goes up and you should totally check out my channel once the structure deck does go up because i should have a triple structure deck deck profile and probably a tri-brigade variant of the fire king deck going up that's going to be very exciting 
and I think that Fire Kings actually have some pretty solid potential. I'm not going to put it higher than tier 2 for now because I don't want to get my hopes up for anything like that. I don't want to be seen as like another hype man YouTuber or something. But I think that Fire King definitely has some potential. The new support out of the structure actually gives it a coherent theme and gives it something to end on. And you don't have to rely on like a bunch of really, really slow, clunky follow-up effects that all of the other Fire Kings did back in the days of old. Like now you actually have a win con. And yes, I do have like some similar floating like Ponyx adds itself back during the next standby right but that's just follow up on top of the end board you actually get to make and as i mentioned i've been testing it with like tri brigade and stuff like that and fractal plus any beast beast warrior or wing beast is a combo like basically known throughout any tri brigade variant ever like in bird up it can end on like anywhere from four disruptions and follow up or like 10 disruptions 11 disruptions and no follow up but in this deck in particular if i can remember correctly because it's been a little while since i've actually done the combo i'll show it off when i do the fire king uh tri brigade deck profile but like if you open fractal any beast beast warrior wing beast you can get like appaloosa the uh fire king continuous spell that lets you exceed summon plus the materials to go into it you can end on revolt you also get like a double dragon lords like you get a bunch of different things off of just these uh uh, like one like two cards basically you have to have some discard stuff but like that doesn't really matter you basically just get so much off of just fractal any beast beast warrior wing beast and like some discard fodder but the discard fodder doesn't matter because it gets replaced by stuff like the ponix when it comes back to your hand during the next standby giving you additional follow-up on top of the fractal you'll be searching off a of revolt it's a fairly consistent and very flexible engine with a bunch of follow-up and i think that it can work very well in combination with so many different other archetypes and so i think that fire king definitely has some massive potential it's been doing pretty good over here uh, over in the ocg sorry and i'm really excited to see what it'll do in the tcg next up on our list is branded and before anyone says anything this is also including chimera because i had chimera in my initial tier list from last month which i used this as a base to go off of and i had a few people say like oh where's chimera putting this deck before chimera on there is a crime stuff like that chimera is just branded at home i mean like i'm not saying one build is better than the other they both have their own benefits but like they're basically the same deck. Both of them need, like, at branded fusion to resolve. Otherwise, they have a bit of a hard time. And I know I'm being a bit exaggeratory there because I'm going to explain why having branded fusion Ash isn't, like, the end of the world anyway. But people just need to understand that Chimera and branded on this tier list fall under the same boat. Cool? Cool. So as I mentioned, I'm going to explain that a lot of people think branded fusion getting Ash is, like, the end of the world for branded in general. But... I don't think that's really the case as someone that played a lot of Branded like a few months ago back when the Puppet Lock was first getting popularized and when Quem came out and stuff like that. Like yes, it does hurt to lose your main play starter, but you have things like Cartesia, you have Quem, you have the Nadir Servant package, you have things like Talents and Thrust running around everywhere in this format that you can also take advantage of. Not to mention all the additional draw power off things like Albion, you have the Bistials and stuff. Like you have so many different other things you can do other than just Branded Fusion. You're not just just hard relying on branded fusion in 90% of hands. Is it going to hurt? Yeah, obviously it is, but like, it's fine. You're fine. Just play branded and get over it. Not to mention, like, I think a lot of people forget that the puppet lock is still legal. Like, it's perfectly legal and very easy to pull off. The main thing with Branded is that, like, a lot of people just stop playing the deck after a while, which, I mean, like, is understandable, especially because the deck is kind of old now. And so a lot of people can only summon Mirror Jade so many times. I get it. But I still think that Branded is a pretty solid contender. I think a lot of people underestimate it, like, all the time. I, I really get tired of hearing people say Branded is, like, a bad deck. Like, I really don't understand how. But if you're looking for an option that's honestly fairly inexpensive now, especially because all the reprints and stuff, and can definitely steal you some wins, Branded is a way to go. Next on the list is Fluanderies, and Fluanderies is doing fine. I mean, like, nothing really too crazy going on with the deck. It's been seeing tops here and there, especially at, like, regional events and stuff like that. It's still basically one-card combo Rabina until you die, uh, and then you will actually end up dying a lot of the time if people just have Ash Blossom. Uh, but Prosperity is still at 3, Harpy's Feather Storm is still at 3. Like, there's not much holding this deck back other than the lack of barrier statue but mainly that just means you have to work a bit more for your wins i'm putting very heavy quotes on that uh compared to just like slapping a barrier statue down and winning against like 99 percent of matchups like now you actually have to like at least dig for your harpy's feather storm or uh see if your opponent can get through empen or not next on our list is labyrinth and labyrinth is a very solid deck right now seeing a good amount of top cut representation and there's not too much to say about labyrinth overall this month i 
will just say it's a really good deck seeing a lot of representation seeing a lot of wins and stuff but there's going to be a lot to talk about labyrinth next month in january when we get maze of millennia and transaction rollback because that's when the deck's going to get completely flipped on its head it's going to be a lot harder to disrupt the things like ash bell etc it's going to have so many different ways to pump out very powerful trap cards against the opponent things like d barrier or virus twice like absolutely absurd and that's when things are going to get really exciting for now though just know that labyrinth is definitely a tier 1.5 deck something to look out for especially now that it's so much cheaper to play next on the list is monadium monadium is another very very solid deck to play right now definitely up there in the 1.5 category it's one of those decks that just has so many different starters and extenders off of just one card in their entire deck along with having non-engine room for things like hand traps and it's kind of like you have to have droll or else you're not going to be able to stop them from doing literally whatever they want that's one of the big things with this deck is that it's so flexible in what you can do you can go for like a king calamity lock you can go for a hand loop with omega multiple times to go for like four or five cards out of hand you can set up like a bunch of different negates you can set up a bunch of follow-up and stuff like there's just so many different variants of monodium that you can play that it's really hard to prepare for one or the other and not to mention even if you do prepare a lot of your outs just have to be droll like you have to look at that ash blossom and then just pray that it becomes a droll in your hand if you stare at it hard enough because one or two hand traps usually isn't going to be enough to stop this deck from kicking your ass very very strong deck very high top cut representation very deserving of the 1.5 category so next on our list is runic like specifically more pure runic variants because this got a lot of requests on twitter like three or four different people asking me about like runic just in general and i was very confused because runic isn't amazing i mean like runic engines and decks like sprite which we'll talk about and stuff like that and then other different variants are like yeah those are pretty solid right but like pure runic like why did people want me to talk about this it tops like a regional here and there because like people don't really prepare for stuff like skill drain over and over one day of peace stuff like that like it's literally just floodgate turbo but it kind of just gets completely melted by stuff like anti-spell fragrance or other similar cards unless they have specifically destruction in hand so i don't really know i mean like if they wanted me to talk about the fur higher variants and stuff like that i'd still definitely keep it in rogue but i don't really think that runic is that worthy of being talked about i just think it more so is a really good engine to supplement other decks like sprite or anything else that can really synergize with it our first tier one deck on the list is going to be purely purely is such a strong deck right now with delicious memory being the only hit that the deck has to it it's able to pump out like six draws during the opponent's standby phase off sleepy memories plus pure leap into noir speaking of which noir is a very very powerful towers monster with an equally powerful targeting uh bounce effect or not bounce but like place on the bottom of the deck i think it is specifically and on top of that they have other really good disruption for going first such as purely beauty and then they have really good war breaking going second with stuff like the purely pretty memory funnily enough they can play in the draw phase to flex around playing against droll and they have so many different other things that they can do to play around a lot of the threats this format things like unchained they're not going to really be popping the unchained stuff they're going to be using other ways of removal it's a very strong very flexible deck really good balance against a lot of the other decks in the format and unless we see like a big sleepy memory hit or something i don't think that purely is going to be going anywhere anytime soon next on the list is dragon link and dragon link's been doing okay I don't want to say it's been like a super bad deck or anything like that, but it really hasn't been seeing as much tops as it was until like the Chaos Space and Magnemot hits and stuff, which again, I still think were very unwarranted. I think a deck winning world shouldn't have it get hit in the TCG where it's a completely different format, but I think the deck is still perfectly fine. It took a few consistency hits, but the end board overall is just exactly the same. Plus we're in a format where stuff like Seals Pass isn't actually horrible. Like ever since Power of the Elements, the entire like game has just completely shifted how we want to play it like back before that we were setting up these really big unbreakable combo end boards or there's these massive floodgates every single game things like a uh, punk back when Hulk was legal they were making calamity every game and stuff like that whereas while we still have some decks that actually want to do that there's a lot of decks now that just rely on stopping your opponent just a little bit just enough so they don't have as much follow-up as you and then using your follow-up to try and go for a kill on turn three which is something we haven't seen 
just in years. And so ending on something like Spheres Pass, or more accurately usually like Spheres Branded Beast Pass, is usually enough to stop a lot of decks, or at least stall enough, to where you can go for the kill with something like Boral and Dragon on turn 3. So I think the deck is definitely solid, it's definitely an option if you want to play it, it just suffers from a bit of consistency issues now that stuff like Chaos Space and Magnum would have received hits. Our next tier 1 deck on the list is going to be of course Rescue Ace. So Rescue Ace is basically like the best deck right now, but I use that term a little loosely because there's no real best deck in my opinion out of the tier 1 decks. Like if you look at like 4 different pie charts, right? or maybe more accurately like three to five different pie charts. Every single event is going to have a different deck that has the highest amount of top cut because there's just a very small gap between how good decks like Unchained, Rescue Ace, and Purely are. Like literally any of them you can take to an event and probably see around the exact same amount of success. I think Rescue Ace is a little bit better because it can take advantage of the Dia Bellstar engine, meaning it's a lot harder to stop, especially now that SP is out, so it means stuff like Imperm on Turbulence isn't going to be as good. And it definitely does take the best use out of SP out of like the other meta decks right now. But when you do compare it like directly to Purely and Unchained, which again, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll get to, it's really not a very high margin between them. And I think that's really cool. I like it when there's formats where a lot of the top decks are kind of like a rock, paper, scissors sort of situation where like no deck is like truly just completely better than the other. But if I did have to choose between the top three, I would definitely say Rescue Ace is slightly better than the other two. Next on the list is Sprite and Sprite's just another deck that's been doing pretty solid overall. It's not doing like too bad, not doing too amazing, but it's definitely still a very solid pick that you can choose right now. And it works as a great engine along Alongside a lot of other decks. Next on our list, we have Plant Link, and Plant Link has actually fallen off a good bit. Like, if you look at the last couple of weeks of pie charts, uh, there's basically just one Plant Link player in there, and that's not very surprising in my opinion. I've mentioned this in like my last few tier lists. Like, every time I bring this deck up, I mentioned that it's a good deck overall, even though it has its issues. But the main issue with Plant Link is that a lot of players aren't very great pilots at it. It's definitely one of those decks you have to be very committed to and actually take the time to sit and learn the ins and outs of the deck to actually see success with it. Otherwise, you're just going to be sitting there like, what does this plant do? So while I don't think that it's a bad deck or that putting it in Rogue means it is bad, it's definitely a deck you're not going to be seeing a lot of representation for. And remember that tier lists are also a combination of representation alongside power level. So while Plant Link is definitely a fairly strong deck, it is very underrepresented, especially by good pilots of the deck, and so you're not going to really see it like everywhere all at once. As I mentioned earlier, our final tier 1 deck of the format is going to be Unchained, which I will nestle comfortably between Purely and Rescue Ace. It's seeing a little tiny bit more success than Purely, so that's why I'm putting it like in between, and it also did just win that YCS not too long ago. Unchained just continues to be a solid deck since the release of the new support, very very strong in having both follow-up and actual end board, and it's really really good at dodging most board breakers or just disruption in general because of all the mass floating that it has. Not to mention they have things like the quick effect Sharvara that can help them dodge things like aim perm or any sort of removal on their back row either. It just has a lot of different get out of jail free cards which makes it a really really strong deck overall. Next on the list we have Vanquish Soul and Vanquish Soul is also doing just alright. I'm going to put it above Fire King because it has a little bit more guaranteed success in my eyes especially once the deck gets a little bit cheaper. The main thing with Vanquish Soul is that the representation is still kind of low due to the price but I think the deck overall is fairly solid even if it does have some consistency issues and tends to rely a lot on like generic non-engine cards but things like Prosperity are still at three copies, Small World, etc. and so they don't really have too many issues accessing these cards plus we're in a more hand trap dominated format as opposed to board breakers right now and this deck can play like 15,000 hand traps in their deck and they can just play anything they really want things like Droll, DD Crow, Ghost Bell, stuff like that plus I mean hey one card combos plus four hand traps in hand is always going to be a thing so uh definitely a pretty solid deck overall our final 1.5 deck of this list is going to be tier i'm going to put it at the bottom of 1.5 here i think it was in tier one actually in my last list but a lot of people have realized that tier still kind of dies even harder to the same things that it did back when it was like super super big but it's a lot easier to actually stop now due to all the hits of the ishizu cards and the tier cards so it's basically just a lot of gambling when you're playing tier like you're literally like okay am i gonna hit please hit please hit please hit and like if you whiff you just pass your turn right if you hit you can pop off 
if you whiff, you just pass. Like, there's kind of just no in-between, really. It's definitely far past its glory days, though it is still pretty strong because they can still make some massive end boards if given the chance. It really just depends on if you like gambling or not. Next on the list are Horus variants, and I think that Horus variants are actually doing a little bit better than they were before. Uh, mainly things like Tear, and then you're also seeing like a bunch of other random jank decks play Horus, but the Horus engine is very, very strong at doing what it does. You're basically taking a very, very strong graveyard reliant archetype, slamming it into decks that like use utilize graveyard stuff, especially in like discards and things, and giving every deck that plays it the ability to do something like make Triglubion and OTK with Numeron Dragon every single turn. It does have its weaknesses, especially things like Ghost Ogre on the Continuous Spell, very, very rough for them there, or Cosmic or anything like that. But that's why Horus is usually just an engine as opposed to like a pure deck, obviously. And so you're still going to be able to fall back on your actual engine pieces. It's usually just there to help slightly more, uh, less consistent decks be a bit more consistent at putting stuff in the graveyard. Things like Orcus. I think Orcus Horus actually did pretty good at a regional the other week. I think it'll only continue to get stronger from here. And I think it's a pretty interesting archetype to see. Next on our list is Snake Eye. And Snake Eye isn't doing amazing. I've said this the last couple of tier lists. I keep putting it on here, though, because I do still pe see people trying to make Make it work. The big thing with Snake Eye is that it kind of just doesn't really do too much. The deck is definitely going to shine a lot more when we get Phantom Nightmare though and they get Snake Eye Populous or whatever its name is because they're also getting a really strong trap alongside it and the new monster can actually search their other back row which is a big issue that the deck had beforehand. Like the field spell is really good but it's one of those field spells that's good to have but not so good you want to play terraforming. You'd rather it be searchable off of your archetype rather than terraforming and now it's actually going to be searchable and they can also go second by searching the uh the sinful spoil snake eye the one that uh steals something sorry not the one that like summons from deck not to mention we're also getting the new fire princess link 3 coming out that's going to be really really cool it's basically just getting a bunch of new toys come phantom nightmare and i think in the future the deck's only going to receive more and more support as we get more lore on the dia bell star line and so i think that snake eye right now isn't great but talk about it in a couple of months and it'll definitely be doing a lot better. Next on our list is Cash, and oof, Cash really fell off, didn't it? I mean, to be fair, losing your main win con and still only having two copies of your best consistency card, it's pretty rough, it's pretty rough. But I really didn't think that just losing a Rise Heart was going to make the deck fall off so hard. Like, yes, there are still variants such as Punk Castro that are still pretty solid overall, and it's just kind of a bad shifter deck like it was back when it first came out, or more accurately back when Power of the Elements first came out and they didn't even have their Darkwing Blast support. But compared to back then when there was like still a lot of decks but like slightly less than now, there's just way too many things to, for the deck to look out for right now, especially when it comes to things that don't lose to shifter. Like decks like Unchained, it's like, oh, they want to use their graveyard, right? Nope. All this stuff also works in case they're banished. They just have to still get destroyed. Not to mention things like SP just being if you get shifted anyway, a lot of people are still going to be able to win because it's basically the equivalent of making Verte, but even stronger. So yeah, uh, cash, not very cash money right now. Next on the list is Makonko. I think Makonko is a fairly strong deck and it actually is kind of represented. Uh, the main thing though with Makonko is that it's still just all right. It did win YCS Bolivia, I believe it was, and that is very impressive. But I think that Makonko is still a deck that's kind of like one of those, oh wow, this popped up and just won an event out of nowhere, rather than a, oh my god guys, this is a prominent meta threat that you have to look out for. It's basically the pure definition of a rogue deck where it absolutely can win you an event and can definitely get you a top even if you're a less experienced player, but it's especially great in the hands of an amazing pilot that's really committed to the deck. The deck definitely did just get a lot stronger though now that it has access to the Ken and Gen package in order to go into Acid Golem and give it to the opponent. Very, very strong there, even if it is a little bit difficult to pull off if you don't know how everything in the deck works. So I think it's a pretty strong option right now if you are committed to the deck and you learn the ins and outs of all your matchups, but if you're a newbie that's trying to just pick up the deck and think you're going to win a tournament with it, yeah, it's probably going to be a pretty hard. <laughs> Next up on our list is Infernoble, and Infernoble's actually been doing pretty well for itself. It's been seeing a good amount of tops, especially now that people are actually learning how to utilize the support. Though, I'm going to be brutally honest, I don't really know all of what this deck does. I've played against literally one Infernoble player since the deck actually started blowing up, and I basically bullied him on his turn 1 with Labyrinth because I opened the nuts both games before he could actually do anything. But I know it utilizes like the new Link 1 that like copies the Synchro 
macro effect and stuff like that and it can end on like multiple pops probably like some negates and stuff basically a bunch of like synchro good stuff while also having access to just all the great parts of having a warrior deck and so i can comfortably put it in the top of tier two for now next up on our list we have salamangrate and i think salamangrate's also a pretty solid deck right now a lot of people have pointed out to me that it's been receiving a lot more tops than it was before lately and i think it falls under the same category as things like infernoble and stuff where it took people a little while to like perfectly utilize the new support but once they actually did start utilizing it the deck became a lot better than it was before with the new support and then just all the good stuff that Cybers has been getting over the years in general. You've gone from ending on like Sunlight Wolf and a Counter Trap or a Rage or something like that pass to actually being able to end on things like Heat Soul going into the Phoenix that pops a bunch of stuff. Like I know can actually end on things now, which is crazy. And as always, Salamangrate's always been this very recursive deck. Things like Jack Jaguar, Spinny, all these different graveyard effects, Will of the Salamangrate. Like you have so many different things that's going to get you follow up for turn three, which is very, very good when you're you're playing a cybers deck and you can make access code talker do i think it's uh, as amazing as it was back in 2018 when it was one of the best decks no definitely not ever since master rule 2020 i mean even if it got all of its stuff back then it doesn't really matter but it is definitely a lot stronger than it was before finally on our list we have sword soul and i think sword soul is still definitely a good deck but it lacks the representation i'm gonna put it just under plant link but you can probably say they're like about even like, Sword Soul, I think, is still very solid. I think a lot of people are just burnt out on it, though. And then it has a pretty poor matchup against some decks like Unchained, where they just have so much removal. Like, between the uh, Escape of the Unchained being able to, like, Icarus attack, pop stuff, which can then summon an Abominable Unchained Soul to pop another card, and the Link Monsters link off with Special Summon Monsters, and the uh, the Caesar guy, the, the Xyz monster, he stops Special Summon effects. Like, it basically just feels perfectly tailored to counter sword soul and then you have cards like sp and rescue ace there to like get really good spot removal against sword soul a deck which spot removal really hurts against and like they also just have a hard time outing a towers in the form of noir like it kind of just has a bad matchup against all the tier one decks uh but anything like below that or more so like the tier two decks i think that sword soul has a pretty good matchup against most things i think it's solid as like a, a bully deck for like the lower tier stuff and it's a really good deck for starting off in the game if you're trying to get someone into the game or if you're just starting to like dip your toes in the competitive scene but against this current format a lot of the top stuff is just going to bully poor sword soul and so i think that it's not an amazing pick to play right now but it's definitely a solid deck overall like there's nothing bad about the deck just a bad format for it but that is going to do it for my tier list for december 2023 that was a very rough recording i don't know how the final product's going to turn out but that was Ooh, that was very scuffed. This one was definitely very interesting to put together because we had a lot of new contenders in this list between all the Valiant Smasher stuff, between Fire King putting Pure Runic back on the list, like all of these different things on here definitely was very mind-boggling to try and talk about. I tried to like rush a little bit more towards the end because I realized the video was taking a little long and I feel like a lot of these don't really need to be talked about extensively, but I do hope it was enough detail to kind of like explain some of the different uh like thought processes that I had throughout a lot of this list. I just think it's crazy that we continue to be in an insanely diverse format like we have no tier zero threats we have a defined tier one category but the tier one decks are very very neck and neck when it comes to actual power the tier 1.5 decks are very very solid and very capable of winning events and everything else is something that it's going to be very hard for the tier one and 1.5 decks to prepare for which means that it's going to be pretty easy for a rogue deck or a tier two deck to actually top or win an event compared to like some other formats as always i like to ask what deck are you going to be on this month I'm going to probably still stay on Labyrinth. It's going to be kind of rough until Rollback comes out because it's still very punishing to lose to Ash Blossom or Bell sometimes, but Rollback's going to like fix all of those problems. But I also want to mess around more with Fire King Tri Brigade. I think that deck is going to be very, very fun. And remember to keep an eye out for the deck profile going up on my channel. But once again, that is going to do it for the video. If you liked it, please surely leave a like as I'll split this video and the channel into the group minute. And if this content were to like it, like the rest of my tier list, then perhaps consider subscribing because we need 5,000 subscribers by the end of 2023, which we are very, very, very close to her in the final month not to mention supports the channel more anything else and it's absolutely free also you want to support me directly while getting some awesome tc merchandise in the process check out tapio cards in the link down below use code aurora 545 for your purchase at checkout and support me financially but once again thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one this is aurora signing off so